so good evening everyone good evening good evening everyone yes. so this is the last day of our boot camp and thank you everyone for like uh, attending the this java boot camp and i hope you are able to get something new from this boot camp and in the today session like uh, we will try to implement a simple project where we will try to implement each and everything we have learned from day 1 till day 5 okay and like we have yesterday left one control statement that is uh, do while so we will discuss that part and after that we will see sim a simple example of class and object and after that we will implement the project okay because we have only one hour so it is not possible for me also to discuss each and everything right yeah so i will try my best ki i should give you like a more explanation on the class and object part okay and it is a separate topic it, it requires like a 2 and 3 hour we have to spend on discussing class and object but we have just one hour so like we will divide our time according to it okay yeah good evening everyone good evening so let's start our today session let me share my screen here yes so in the yesterday session yeah here in the yesterday session we have discussed about uh, this control statement here right we have discussed about control statement we saw why we need control statement guys anyone yeah why we need control statement in order to manage the flow of the execution of the code we need to okay we need to use control statement right and uh, here we have three uh, control statement the first one is the selection statement selection statement uh, like when we can use selection statement guys when we have given several option and among several option we have to choose only one option then we can use selection statement we have seen if else and switch statement when to use if else like uh, when we have given two option and among two option we have to choose only one option then we can go for if else if we have given multiple option and among uh, like more than two option and among these option i have to choose only one option then i can go for if else if and switch right apart from this we discuss about the iterative statement also like when we have to execute the group 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 of code again and again then we can go for iterative statement we discuss about the for loop right when we have given the starting point and when we know the ending point then we can go for the for loop right in the for loop we have three part initialization expression test expression and updation expression right and after that here is the body of the for loop and for the first time for the first time initialization expression get executed right uh pranjal i will like uh, okay yeah i will share the note of the previous session also and in today session also on the comment okay yeah and how to download certificate okay this i will tell you after the project okay guys yeah so for the first time we have this initial expression that get executed and after that the condition will be checked if the condition is true we will move inside the body of the for loop and after executing the body of the for loop updation expression get executed after executing updation expression again test condition if the test condition is true again the body of the for loop this cycle continues till the time test expression is false right so this is about for loop we have discussed and after that we have discussed about while loop in while loop what we have first we will use the initialization part first we will initialize the variable after that we will write the while keyword here the condition part this uh, while loop will get executed till the time the condition is true and at the last or like uh, in between the body of the while loop you can write the updation part also we have taken one example and we have executed the while loop code also so guys today so guys today we will discuss about do while loop okay and after that we will go to the project part so guys 
ओके सो दिस इज अंटेक्स ऑफ डू वाई लुक फर्स्ट डू की वर्ड आफ्टर दैट टू कली ब्रैकेट एंड इन साइड द कली ब्रैकेट वी है राइट द बॉडी ऑफ द डू वाई राइट द कोड ऑफ द बॉडी ऑफ द डू वाई लुक ओके एंड इन द लास्ट वी हैव दिस वाइल की वर्ड एंड द कंडीशन सो हियर वॉट हैपन्स वेन वी हैव टू एग्जीक्यूट द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द कंडीशन ओके वेन वी वॉन्ट टू एग्जीक्यूट द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द कंडीशन देन वी कैन यूज डू वाइल लुक ओके द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वाइल एंड डू वाइल इज वॉट हियर यू कैन सी इन द फ्लो डायग्राम ऑल्सो फर्स्ट द स्टेटमेंट इन साइड द लुक गेट्स एग्जीक्यूटेड एंड आफ्टर दैट कंडीशन इज चेक okay and if the condition is true again the statement inside the do while loop get executed and this cycle goes continues till the time the condition is getting false right so irrespective of the condition my body of the do while loop will execute one time okay and after that it depends on the condition if the condition is true it will execute again and again but in the while loop what we uh, what happens e the body of the while loop will execute only if the condition is true right when the condition is true then only you can execute the body of the while loop right so let's try to create one like program here again in order to create the program you have to go to the default package click on the new class and let's say the name of the program is do while the name of the class is do while we will include the public static void main finish here and uh, here we will write ki hai i have to do what i have to mm -hmm, yeah so i have to print number from 1 to 10 right i have to print number from 1 to 10 so here i is equal to 1 and here i will use do while loop okay do system dot out dot print ln and here i and after that after the curly bracket i will write the while keyword and here i will write the condition i less than equal to 10 okay so my starting point is what let's suppose this the variable name is my starting point starting point is 1 and we have to print start here and it should get printed till the time start is less than equal to 10 and here i will update the starting point also right and here i will use a semicolon in order to terminate the while loop right so this is my simple program let's try to run the program click on run run and here so you can see we are getting the output from 1 to 10 right we have discussed this part ki what happens first the initialization statement take place after that it will move to the it will execute the uh, body of the do while loop and after executing the body of the do while loop it will execute the condition if the condition is true it will again execute the body of the do while right and this process continues till the time this condition is getting false okay and here is my like updation part right so let's try to make the value of start as equal to 11 right let's try to write start is equal to 11 and let's try to see according to like our program it should not print the answer because the ending point is what 10 right but let's try to see here what output we get on the output screen run okay so here guys you can see we are getting the answer as 11 why because irrespective of the condition my do uh, my body of the do while loop will execute one time irrespective of the condition right and after executing the body of the while loop it will check the condition here you guys are getting it about do while part okay and okay so here so let's try to write one more program what we have to do we have to add number from 1 to 10 right so what we can do here and uh, like i want to uh, write this program with the help of for loop because i know the starting point and the end point the starting point is what 1 i is less than equal to 10 i plus plus so the first one is my initialization statement second one is my condition statement and third one is the updation expression right curly bracket and here i will do what 
फर्स्ट आई विल टेक वन वेरिएबल फर्स्ट आई विल टेक वन वेरिएबल इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिजर्व द सम इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिजर्व द सम आई विल टेक वन वेरिएबल दैट इज एंड सम इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड हियर आई विल राइट सम इज इक्वल टू सम प्लस आई राइट एंड आफ्टर दैट आई विल राइट सिस्टम डॉट आउट डॉट प्रिंट and here i will write sum right so guys what i am doing here i have to like uh, calculate the sum of natural number from 1 to 10 so in order to calculate in order to store the value in order to preserve the previous sum i am creating one variable that is sum outside the for loop body and i am initializing the sum by zero right and after that after each i creation what i am doing i am adding the updated value of i in sum variable and after update like after doing addition what i am doing i am saving the result inside the sum again okay and after that i am printing the sum part here so guys uh, this part is clear should i dry run the program or like you are able to get the logic here everyone yes no should i dry run the program with the help of table or you can dry run the program by yourself so here guys you can see we are getting the answer as 55 right okay so let's try to see here one minute so Okay. Okay. Done. Okay. So dry run the program. Okay. Let's dry run the program here. What I will do in order to dry run the program, I have to create one table here. Ah, uh, one minute. Yeah. So what I will do here, I will create one table. Okay. And here, so yes so this is our table here and first what we are doing our execution start from uh, the line number starting like from the public static void main here i will comment this part also okay so what will happen i will come at line number 13 our execution start from line number 13 now so here in order to dry run any iterative statement what you can do you can create a table like this here you can write value of uh, i and here you can write uh, okay condition part and here you can write updation part and apart from this okay calculation part you can like uh, write uh, you can create any number of column here i need only four columns so i am creating like this only okay so here for the first time what will happen first my uh, at line number 13 sum is equal to 0 right the value of sum is what 0 here sum is equal to 0 and after that we will come at line number 14 the system will see this for loop it will go inside the for loop first the initialization statement will take place that is this int i is equal to 1 so the value of i is what 1 here after that after executing the initialization statement it will go to the condition part right it will go to the condition part here the condition is what guys here the condition is i is less than equal to 10 right okay give me one minute yes so here the value of i is what 1 is less than equal to 10 so this condition is true right so the moment that condition is true we will move inside the body of the for loop and we will execute line number 15 that is sum is equal to sum plus i so 
the value of sum is what 0 0 plus i 0 plus i the value of i is 1 right so 0 plus 1 is 1 here and what we are doing 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 and we are storing this one again inside the sum variable sum container after executing the body of the while loop we will move to the updation part that is i plus plus i plus plus means what i is equal to i plus 1 so the value of i is what 1 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 here okay after executing the updation part we will again go to the condition part 2 is less than equal to 10 again the condition is true we will execute the body of the for loop that is sum is equal to sum plus i the value of sum is 1 and the value of i is 2 right so 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 and after executing the body of the while uh, after executing the body of the for loop we will again go to the updation part i is equal to 2 plus 1 right so here we will get the value of i as 3 right so after executing the updation part we will again jump back to the condition part 3 is less than equal to 10 again the condition is true we will again execute the body of the for loop that is sum is equal to sum plus i the value of i is 3 now the value of sum is 3 so 3 plus 3 is what 6 right everyone 3 plus 3 is 6 so what we are doing here we are calculating the sum and we are storing the at each iteration we are calculating the sum and after that we are storing the result inside the sum variable again so we are preserving the output uh, we are preserving the answer inside this sum variable and this cycle will continue till the time the value of i is 11 right 11 less than equal to 10 false right so the moment 11 is less than equal to false we will move out of the for loop and we will execute line number 17 right system dot out dot print ln sum if this is the last lecture then please give some much time to the out concept okay great yeah so this is about uh, for loop and uh, do while loop you guys are getting the point so let's start with the oops concept now okay so we have okay, not much time left yeah so guys tell me one thing okay so let's suppose you have to create one project for your school and uh, this is uh, like the simple software you have to create for the school and in order to write software you are writing software in java program okay you are using java language and here what is the software like what is the uh, demand of the software key you have to manage the record of the student right so if you don't know about class and object if you don't know about class and object if you know about variables if you know about for loop and while loop and like uh, let's suppose you have to manage only 20 student record okay the name you have to manage the age you have to manage the roll number you have to manage right so how you will write the program how you will write the program then okay so what you will do you have to manage record of 20 student okay record of 20 student first we are discussing why we need class and object okay record of 20 student here yeah. so what you will do if you don't know about class and object so you will say okay first i will create one string okay one minute here yeah, yeah. string name is equal to string name one okay first i will do what first i will store the information of the first student so here the like i am taking three information that is name the roll number and the age of the student okay a b c okay here or let's say the the name is ram here ramesh okay and uh, int age 1 is equal to 20 sorry i have to take the age in integer and after that let's say the key the roll number is int roll number 1 is equal to 7 okay so here what i am doing i am creating a software for my school and uh, the demand of this software is what i have to manage the record of 20 student and till this point i don't know about class and object so what i will do in order to store the 
record of each and every student i have to create a variable and inside the variable i have to store information like this for the first student okay and let's suppose i have to again like store the information of the second student then what i will do i will copy the same code here and here i will change the name of the variable name to age to roll number 2 okay and here let's suppose the name is rajesh right and the age is 21 and the roll number is 71 right so here we have created two student and we have stored the details of two student inside the variable but here guys you can see what we are doing we are writing the repeated code again and again and this is for two student if i have to create 20 student i have to copy the same data again and again okay if i don't know about the class and object right so so what will happen what will happen the first thing ki if i will make any mistake in my code then it will become very difficult to debug that mistake my code will become bulkier right everyone i am doing the repeated code again and again so it is not the good practice okay so there are lot of flaws in this code okay so that's why we came with came up with the class and object part so class is what guys we have discussed like i have told you in the first and second session ki class is a blueprint or template that defines the properties and functionality or behavior of your object okay and object is a real world entity that describes the that has those uh, method okay you can say ki object is a real world entity that has those method and those properties of the class okay so let's suppose uh, you have to like uh, build a house okay you have to build a house in order to like in order to use that house what you will use uh, like what will be your first aim you have to build that house right build a house for yourself okay so what is the first thing you will do what is the first thing you will do guys first you will go to the okay yeah so i will provide the node yeah i will provide the node guys okay so guys here what we have to do now we will see ki what is class and object the definition part is clear you will get this definition everywhere on the google also but like what is class here so here we are saying ki hey we have to build the house in order to build the house first we will create the blueprint of the house right we will create the blueprint of the house and this blueprint is called the class is called my class okay this blueprint or template is called my class after creating the blueprint what i will do i will build the house and after that i will use the properties and functionality of my house right see of my house okay so this is the object here so guys you are getting the point again if i will take the mobile example if i am general if i am talking about the general mobile then mobile has some properties and some functionality associated with it okay the moment i will buy the mobile from the store the moment i will start using the mobile that means ki i am using the object of class mobile right similarly for fruit also fruit is what my class root has some properties and some functionality associated with it the moment uh, let's suppose i am using apple that apple is what my object right let's suppose the properties of the apple is it is red in color the shape right shape is also the properties of the apple and the functionality is it is good for health right so till this point you guys are clear ki why we need class and object and what is class and object yes or no okay sir please complete program of school that you have talked earlier yeah i will like i will give you the reference but still okay. sir so i am assuming ki you guys are like clear with the class and object part okay so here what i have to do now i have to okay guys you will get the certificate after the session okay after completing this session you will get the certificate yeah so please wait for a time yeah so class is what guys 
क्लास इज अ ब्लू प्रिंट और टेम्पलेट राइट दैट डिफाइन्स द प्रॉपर्टीज एंड बिहेवियर और फर्सनैलिटी ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट डिफाइन्स द प्रॉपर्टीज एंड बिहेवियर ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट राइट ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट सो लेट्स ट्राई टू लाइक सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम दैट वी आर क्रिएटिंग अब विद द हेल्प ऑफ क्लास एंड ऑब्जेक्ट ओके सो वट आई विल डू ये सो इन ऑर्डर टू ओके लेट्स क्रिएट वन प्रोजेक्ट हियर वन मिनट या so here i will go new first i will create one class here okay uh, let's suppose the name of the class is school management okay and uh, public static void main here okay so this is your main class school management and inside this class you have to do what again the task is same you have to create a software for your school management okay so what you will do here Uh, the previous method you are clear, right? He in order to create, if you don't know about class and object, then you have to write the data like this for each and every student. But here, what I will do? First, I will create the template of the student, right? So in order to create the template of the student, what I will use? I will use class. So class student, and here, in order to like uh, create the class, I have to use this keyword class. and the name of the class that is student here and inside the body of the class i will define the properties and behavior of an class okay so here uh properties or we can write key data members okay data members we can like call these properties as data member in java okay so guys let's suppose ki hai student has name okay what all properties student can have guys can you write on the comment what for all properties student can have okay what kind of class is that sir okay so you are talking about this student class so what i am doing here sai ki i have to create like a student management system right so in order to create student management system first what i am doing i am defining the blueprint or template of a student okay like if you are the student then you have some name right you have roll number associated with it you have age associated with it right so similarly for other student also the same thing will happen right other student also have some name some roll number some age right so yeah correct everyone roll number name phone address school name date of birth okay so here for our simplicity we will take string name okay a string name after that i will take int age okay int age is equal okay int age and uh, i will take int roll number right everyone and let's suppose here i will take marks of three subject int english int hindi and int computer so like you can define uh, more properties but here we have time constraint so we will not go further from here so these are what my properties okay and here you have defined the properties okay so what you can do you can you can constrain this properties what you can do you can define the access specifier also right you can define ki hey if i want to use this data member inside the class what i will do what i will do guys i will make the data member as private right i will make the data member as private like this okay private here okay and if you want to use these data members or properties outside the class what you can do you can make the name as public here okay 
and by default uh, these data members of properties are public by default right so name number yeah section yes it will be have a uh, yeah section also so int age string roll number yeah after that what we will do let's suppose uh, we will come to the functionality part functionality or member function okay member function here so guys before coming to the member function can you guys tell me like if you are creating the like if you have seen student management uh, uh, portal what happens you get the form right you get the form on the uh, on the user interface right and in the form you do what you first fill the details right the name of the student the in uh, the age the roll number right you fill everything and after that you click on the submit button right you click on the submit button so here also we are saying hey these are all what my data members that is properties that i have to do what i have to initialize right so i can use here what function let's suppose the function is what void set name okay this function will be used to set the name of the student right so here i will take the argument as string n and after that here i will write name is equal to n okay till this part is clear guys okay if you are talking about function if you don't know about function so this is my name of the function this is a return type what type of value i i will return to the uh, to the uh, place from where i have called the function right so here i have used uh, school management class already dhaninjay yeah ha ah, these are all variables but inside the class we are saying here hey, these are all what data members right so in order to set the name what i am doing here name is equal to n and after that here return i have to return nothing the functionality of this function is what i have to just set the name of the student right and uh, these are my parameter this is my parameter here okay so i created just one parameter here and after that what i have done so this is my blueprint here okay this is my blueprint here so what will happen behind the scene guys okay let's see what will happen behind the scene so behind the scene you can assume ki you will have one square box like this square box like this and this square box is what my student class right and inside this student class we have some data member okay we have some data member that is my age name age roll number and the marks that is english hindi and computer right and apart from this we have one member function for function also that is set name okay so this is a blueprint we have created for the student class okay and now what i have to do i have to create the object of this class okay in order to store the information of the student student are what student are what guys if i will say hey if i am the student then i am the object right and i am the object so similarly here also i have created the blueprint now what i will do inside the main here inside the main method i will define the object so how i will define the object here i will write ki hai in order to create the object in order to create the object first you have to write the name of the class the name of the class is what student we have to create the object of the student class so first i will write student here and after writing student here i will say ki hai ramesh no student s1 student s1 and uh, is equal to new student and this so guys in order to create the object i have to write the class name and the name of the object and after that i have to use new keyword and this is called constructor okay and i have what i am doing i am writing the constructor here that is student okay let's try to break this part 
सो हेयर आई एम सेइंग कि है माय स्टूडेंट इज व्हाट माय स्टूडेंट इज व्हाट गाइस क्लास नेम एंड एस वन इज व्हाट गाइस कैन गाइस टेल मी व्हाट इज एस वन एवरीवन Uh, what does return do in a void method okay so here you can see ki void means nothing we are re uh, returning nothing so here i am not i am returning nothing that's why i have written the math, uh, the return type as void if i have to return some integer value let's suppose i have to return 2 here then i will write the return type uh, as integer here okay guys if i have to return double value then i will write the return type as double and here i will return 2.2 here okay if i have to return the string then i will write here string the return type as string and the value that i will return okay that should be also a string here let's suppose a b c d so you guys are getting the point return type and the value are written uh, this should match here so here i am returning nothing because the functionality of this function is what to set the name that i have done at line number 12 okay so void okay object new object so guys let's come back to the this part what we are doing here we are creating the object student is what my class name and this s1 is what guys this s1 is what this is my reference name right this is what my reference name and after that this new student is doing what guys new student is doing what this new student is giving me the okay one minute yeah okay yeah so this new student is giving me what guys giving the reference of the memory allocation it is giving me the reference of the memory allocation inside heap okay so this new keyword is used to create used to allocate memory inside the heap here we are saying ki hey we have allocated the memory for student object inside the heap and we are returning the reference that is the address of that memory allocation and we are putting the reference where inside s1 right so you can assume like this ki here what you have done this is your student and the moment you are creating the object that is student student the moment you are creating the object here student s1 is equal to new student and this okay so what this line is doing ki you can assume ki there will be a memory and the name of the memory is what heap okay the name of the memory is what heap and inside this heap memory what is happening here like this uh, one minute yeah there will be memory allocated there will be some memory allocated for the student s1 object okay memory allocated for the student s1 object and after that okay and after that what will happen there will be some address some starting address for this memory allocation let's suppose the starting address is what 700 okay so this new keyword will do what it will first create the memory it will first allocate the memory inside the heap and after that it will return the address of the memory allocation and it will store the address inside s1 so you guys are getting it now like uh, what is happening behind the scene now okay like there are multiple thing but till this point it is a simple like explanation i can give
so we have created the student object and now i have to do what i have to like uh, enter i have to enter the data inside s1 so what i can do either i can use this method that's uh, this method here member function okay so how i will use the method here i will write s1 dot set name and here i will write ramesh okay so with the help of object i use dot operator and i use the name of the method and inside the parameter i am passing ramesh so what will happen inside name ramesh will be stored okay and similarly if i will write uh, s1 dot age is equal to 30 s1 dot uh, roll number is equal to 35 and uh, similarly s1 dot marks in english is equal to 89 s1 dot marks in computer is equal to 79 and s1 dot marks in hindi is equal to 90 okay so the moment you will write this line okay the moment you will in insert the data inside the data members of s1 object then what will happen behind the scene you can assume like this okay one minute yeah so uh, this is your heap inside this heap this is a memory allocation and inside this memory allocation what will happen you will have name and inside the name you will have what ramesh and uh, similarly <laughs> for age you will have 30 for the roll number you will have 35 and similarly for marks that is english hindi and computer here you will store the data you guys are getting the point ki this is your heap uh, this is a memory allocation and inside this memory allocation okay uh, let me tell you like this okay one minute give me one second yeah so let's assume ki this is your heap here okay this is your heap here heap memory and uh, you have created one object that is student s1 is equal to new student and okay here like this right so the moment you will create object what will happen memory will be allocated inside the heap so you can assume ki this is your heap memory okay that is allocated and inside this memory allocation what will happen you will have four byte allocated to your age why four byte allocated to your age guys because we know ki integer occupy four byte okay so all the data members that are having integer data types that will get four byte inside the memory and this name is of string type so you know ki one character uh, like one character occupy two bytes so the length of the string into two will be the size of the string name variable okay guys so here you are saying ki hey, inside name you are having the name as ramesh or you can say yeah ramesh here and similarly inside <coughs> inside age you will have 30 and similarly for other data members right when you will write this line okay when you will write this line uh, here s1 dot set name s1 dot age s1 dot roll number like this okay and now again i have to create one more object this is my first student information now again i have to create object of student to store the information of second student the moment i will write student s2 is equal to new student what will happen again inside the memory uh, like inside the heap memory what will happen there will be memory allocated for student s2 right 
there will be memory allocated for student s2 and this s1 will store the reference of this first memory allocation okay let's suppose the starting address of this memory allocation is 700 af okay so it will store the starting address of the object so similarly let's suppose the starting address of this second s student s2 is 600 6009 and again what will happen inside this object you will have name okay you will have name you will have age you will have roll number okay yeah like this age like this and similarly for roll number similarly for marks you can write like this and one more thing i want to like uh, discuss here if you are not initializing your data members then by default what will be stored inside the uh, what will be stored inside this container so the default value will be stored inside this container for integer the default value is 0 for float the default value is 0.0 .0. for string the default value is empty string so you guys are getting the point now like how to create object and uh, what is object and what happens behind the scene yeah and there are more thing also like we can discuss in the today's session class because we have to discuss the project part but hope you are able to get the basic understanding of class and object and like if you uh, you have to explore more parts okay on yourself and uh, now let's discuss the project also so we have simple project the project is uh, give me one minute here Uh, this project uh, basically nahi ek tarah se like uh, what we are doing here uh, it is not possible to create a full flash project using uh, uh, that will have the front end part and the back end part right it is not possible in 5 days in 1 hour to teach the html css and uh, javascript and the back end part that is your java and create one project right so what we are doing here like we are taking one project or you can say this this is my number guessing game and we are trying to implement each and everything that we have discussed till now okay so you will get the revision also and you will be able to understand ki how to implement uh, according to the logic okay according to the use case how you can approach the question so here the game is what number guessing game and uh, like this is a project what you can do like you know the back end part i will tell you the back end part if you know html css if you know the front end part you can create the front end part and this will be your project okay because you have seen this uh, number guessing, guessing game in your mobile app also on the web page also you can if you can type on uh, the guess the number game you can get the website from there you can play this game also right so here this is my number guessing game and the rule is what user will be given k attempts or trial okay user will be given k attempts or trial the computer will come up with a random number between 1 and 100 okay if the guess number is equal to the actual number user win the game if the k trials are exhausted the program will end with a suitable message like a user lost the game and the fifth point is what for every other guess the computer will either give a hint as too high or too low and then ask for another input right so the rule part is clear guys everyone yeah yes no okay okay great. so what we will do here let's try to think how we can approach this part and i am uh, like it is up to you like how you can expand this project the student management now you are able to have the basic understanding of class and object but you should know uh, there are many things in uh, oops concept that you should uh, know in order to create the project okay so let's create here default uh, new class here guess the number public static void main so guys if you will see the question here it is saying here 
user will be given k attempts or trial okay so what i will do here i will first declare one variable int k okay and here i will take okay i will print ki hai system dot out dot print ln uh, number of attempts okay i will take the number of attempts from the user only okay i will take the number of attempts from the user only and uh, what i will do here in order to take input from the user in order to take input from the user what you can do in uh, in java you can use scanner class okay guys you can use scanner class and uh, like how you can use scanner class in order to use scanner class first you have to import the package where this scanner scanner class is already defined okay this scanner class is already defined by the developer and this scanner class is in java.util package here guys you can see ki we have this default package and in the default package we are writing the class similarly there is a java.util package that we have to import in order to use scanner class so i will say ki here import java dot util dot scanner okay so here what i have done java dot util and inside the util we have this scanner class okay so you can write like this java dot util dot scanner or you can write like this also java dot util dot star and this will include each and every class that is defined inside the java.util package okay and after that what i will do i will take input from the user that is number of attempt okay number of attempt i will take input from the user in order to use the scanner class in order to use the scanner class what i have to do i have to create the object right in order to use the properties and functionality of a mobile i have to buy the mobile right in order to use right similarly here i will use scanner sc is equal to new scanner and inside this system dot in okay guys so here we have created object with the help of new keyword okay this is a name of the class this is a reference name okay and here we are saying ki hey we are taking input in the system right and after that sc is equal to oh sorry int k is equal to sc dot next int okay so here what i am doing this function is already defined inside the scanner class so in order to use the data members or member functions what we can do we can use a dot operator here and after that we can use the name of the function or we can use the properties of that functions right similarly here i am also using k is equal to sc dot next int and with the help of this function i can take integer input from the user if you have to take uh, uh one minute yeah so if I, you have to take uh, this so if you have to take double then you have to use this method sc dot next double similarly for long input you can take uh, next long and for short input short data type input you can use next short if you have to take single word from the user as input then you can use next okay similarly for boolean also you can use next boolean and here i have to take integer as input so that's why i'm using next int method okay i'm calling the next int method so here so you got the number of attempts so here after number of attempts what i will do i know the starting point that is 1 and the last attempt will be what k so if i know the starting point and the end point and i know the number of interval i will use for loop okay you can use while loop here also okay but if you know the number of intervals then you can go for for loop here int i is equal to 1 i is less than equal to k i plus plus right so till this part is clear and here also let's again come to the rule part 
uh, here the second rule is what the computer will come up with the random number between one and hundred okay so here what i will do <laughs> int num is equal to okay one minute yeah import dot java dot utilia so here i can write in num is equal to guys can you know, know any function with the help of which i can generate random number i will use what i will use math dot random function right and this math dot random function will do guys what it will generate number between 0 and 1 all the number between 0 and 1 right it uh, the number can be anywhere anything 0 0 0.2 0 0.0 0 4 right like this the number will be randomly generated between 0 and 1 so what i have to do what i have to do i have to take random number between 1 and 100 right so what i will do here what i will do here guys i will first write here int and here I will multiply math dot random with hundred, okay, with hundred. And why I am taking int? Because I want the integer part only, okay. I don't want the this uh, decimal part, so that's why I am using int here. And I will use one plus. Why one here, guys? Because if the number is zero, if the number is zero, then I am saying ki, hey, I don't want zero. I should start from one and the number should lie between uh, light in 100 okay so from 1 till 100 i have to generate a random number and this is a expression to generate the random number and we have stored the random number inside num container num variable and after that what i will do okay again come back to the rule part so here we are saying ki, hey, if the guess number is equal to the actual number, user win the game. And for every other guess, guess the computer will either give hint as too high or too low. So we have three options available and we have to choose one option at a time. So guys, we cannot use if else because if else is used for two options available and only one option we have to choose. So we will go with if else if, okay? So here I will write, ki hai, if, okay, uh, first what I have done. I have taken number of attempts as input from the user. After that, I have generated random number from the system. And after that, first I will take the number that we have to guess from the user also, right? System dot out dot print. And here I will write enter the number. Okay enter the number here i will write and uh, let's write here print ln and again i will use what int guess number is equal to in order to take input from the user what i have to use object name dot the method name next int okay i will take integer input from the user and i will store the integer input inside guess number and here I will write the selection statement if guess number is equal to is equal to the num. Okay. If the guessing number is equal to is equal to the random number, okay. Let's take the let's write the variable name as random num. Okay. So here I will write key random. Okay num here so if the guessing number is equal to is equal to random number then what i will do here i will say ki hey you won the game system dot out dot print ln you won the game here you won the game and after that here i will break the for loop iteration okay here 
लाइक द मूवमेंट द सिस्टम विल सी दिस ब्रेक स्टेटमेंट इट विल मूव आउट ऑफ द फॉल लूप ओके एंड इफ द गैस नंबर इज नॉट इक्वल टू रेंडम नंबर देन दे कैन बी टू पॉसिबिलिटी द नंबर कैन बी ग्रेटर देन द रेंडम नंबर और द नंबर कैन बी लेस देन द रेंडम नंबर ओके सो हियर आई विल राइट एल्स इफ गैस नंबर is greater than random number okay then what i will write here guys i will write ki hey you have entered you have okay you can write like this the number is greater then the actual number right you can write like this also okay and after that you will use here else okay if the first condition is not true if the guess number is not uh, if the guess number is equal to is equal to random number then you won the game break the iterations if the first condition is not true then the second condition it will check if the guess number is greater than random number then the body of the second lc part will get executed and if the first and second condition are not true then i will go to the else part and inside the else part what i will write here i will write ki hai this line the number is less than the actual number okay in the else part if both the condition are not true then it means ki the number is less than the actual number and here we have done with the for loop and after this after moving out of the for loop okay if if the number of attempts okay if the value of i is greater than k okay here i will take int i outside and here like this if the value of i is greater than k that is number of attempt then what i can do i can print ki hai system dot out dot print ln a uh, total attempt is exhausted right exhausted and at the last what i can do i can print the actual number system dot out dot print ln and here the actual number is i will use plus here and after that the actual number is what random number right everyone so hope everyone is clear with the logic part yes uh can i know which software you are you are using here we are using eclipse id guys okay you can go for visual studio code you can go for netbeans intellij but here i am using eclipse okay so what is random here okay random is a function here okay random is a function here and this function is defined inside math class and what this function will do it will generate number between 0 and 1 0 and 1 like 0.2 0.004 okay and in order to like uh, like why i am doing 100 here why i am multiplying with 100 in order to get the number between 1 and 100 okay that's why i am using random here yeah i can use import dot uh, java, import java dot util dot star in order to include each and every packet that is defined inside util package right okay anything else you are not able to understand from the code here okay this is a simple code that we have written here we have used for loop okay why for loop because we know the starting interval and the last interval and we have done what we have used used if else if right because there are more than two options and we have to choose only one option among them okay let's try to save the program and run the program here so see you guys can see what we got on the console that is number of attempts right so this mean what will happen line number 
is executed okay that is number of attempts after that line number 8 will get executed and we will come at line number 9 here at line number 9 what we are doing we are asking uh, integer input from the user so i will say ki hey let the number of attempt is 3 okay let the number of attempt is 3 the moment you wrote 3 what happens you come at line uh, you come okay you come at line number 11 at line number 11 what you have done you have generated a random number from the system and you have stored that random number inside random num variable okay and after that you have declared one int i variable outside the for loop and we will come inside the for loop and what will happen first the initialization statement will take place that is i is equal to 1 and after that it will check 1 is less than equal to k that is 1 is less than equal to 3 the value of k is what 3 okay and we will come inside the body of the for loop because the condition is true here right so we will execute line number 4 14 that is system dot out dot println and enter the number so that's why we are getting enter the number printed on the console right after that what we are doing we are saying ki hey again i want the number from the the number that user has to guess from the user so here i will say ki hey so the number i want is let's suppose the number is 34 so it is saying ki the number is less than the actual number right it is saying the number is less than the actual number this mean my first <laughs> my first if condition is false and my second else if condition is also false that is the number that i am guessing 34 is not greater than okay one minute yeah hmm so the number is greater yeah so the uh, second else if condition is also false so that's why we are moving in the third else condition the number is less than the actual number so here we are getting the uh, hint key the number that we are guessing is less than the actual number so let's try to again guess the number and let's try to give the number as uh let's some larger number okay let's try to give the number as 60 okay let's try to see so now it is saying ki hey the number is greater than the actual number okay this is my second attempt right now this is my second attempt and this is my last attempt here enter the number right so i have to guess a number that is between 34 and 60 so guys can you guys tell me like what number i should guess here in the chat everyone what number i should guess here Okay. So let's try to guess the number as forty. Okay. So the number is less than the actual number. So it is saying that hey, you have exhausted the total number of attempt that is the total number of attempt is what 3 you have already taken 3 attempt and you are not able to guess the actual number and the actual number is what 51 okay so guys the concept is clear and the code is clear so this is a simple code that we have done using for loop and uh, with the help of selection statement and we are using here break also and we are taking input from the user and we are able to see ki where we can use the variable part so this is a simple project and you can add more thing to this project also right so number is 55 okay let's uh, okay one minute i will take five more minute and after that we will end the session okay so here let's write the number of attempt also okay i will write the number of attempt also p t r l v and here i will write number of attempt and after that plus k so guys here you can see what i am doing i am using the variable and the english sentence inside like both inside the same system dot out dot printlen so how you can use i am writing here plus right with the help of plus 
what i am doing i am concatenating the english sentence and the data inside the k variable okay so let's try to save the number and here yeah. let's try to drag down the program again and the number of attempts let's take this time the number of attempt is 5 okay so enter the number guys what number i should enter here now 52 i should enter i should enter 52 okay i will enter 52 here so you guys know now how to drag down the program this for loop you will be able to drag down the program okay by making the table right you can drag down the program here so let's take the number first number is 52 so here it is saying ki the number is less than the actual number and the number of attempt is what k okay five we have done a wrong okay here i have to write i okay here i have to write i and again let's try to run the program here why i am writing i here and why i am not writing k here k is the final value k is the ending point okay i have to write like the first attempt the second attempt the third attempt and in order to write that thing that thing is stored inside i okay because my i is iterating my i is updating after each iteration right so that's why i am taking i here and run this part number of attempt 5 and let's take the so here you can see the number of attempt we are getting the first attempt and the first attempt is what enter the number let's suppose the number is 62 okay so the number is greater than the actual number so we are at the second attempt so the second attempt uh, okay one person is saying 47 so let's enter the number as 47 again okay we guess the wrong number so the number is less than the actual number so vedant and dhananjay saying one is saying 54 okay first we will go with 54 and after that 60 okay so 54 here so the number is greater than the actual number so it must lie between 47 and 54 okay it will not be 67 because we have uh, like written 54 and the number is greater than the actual number so what i should write here so let's write 60 here okay or 51 so 51 i should write here let's try to write 51 here Yeah. Why I'm not not writing 60 and 67, guys? Because I already know that the number is between 47 and 54, right? The number is le okay. This 47 is less than and 54 is greater than. So I'm writing 51 here. So the number is greater than the actual number 51. So it is lying between 47 and 50. So we have last option left, guys. So what I should write here? Okay, fifty-one. I have already written, so I am getting the answer is the number is greater than the actual number, right? And fifty-four, I have already written. So one of you are saying fifty. Anyone else with fifty, or should I type some lower range? Okay, so you are saying fifty. So let's see fifty here. Oh, so we are like close to the answer. It is forty-nine, right? Okay, so the game is clear. and uh, this is simple code and this is one project also okay you have implemented the basic, like you have understood the basic knowledge and after implementing the, like after understanding the basic knowledge you have implemented a simple project using for loop while loop and uh, here you can use while loop also right and how you can use while loop here in order to use while loop you have to just change the for loop here you will say ki hey int i is equal to 1 and here you will write while i is less than equal to k this is my initialization part this is my condition part and at the last i will write the updation part k plus plus or k is equal to k plus 1 okay i have to increment the attempts by 1 right so you not uh, k it is i is equal to i plus 1 okay i have to increase the attempt by 1 so like this you can use while also okay so yeah i will send, uh, share the notes with you guys and this is all for the boot camp thank you for attending the boot camp and hope i am able to clear most of the doubt okay and it is important if you are learning something and if you are creating a simple project then you will get the clear idea ki hey how things are happening behind the scene right do we use switch also okay
do we use switch also yes we can use switch also you can you have to modify the codes and you can use switch also because here we are having more than two condition okay sir how we can download certificate okay uh, thank you thank you everyone so let's see how you can download the certificate give me one minute mm. yeah so you can go to the one link here and from the one link first mark the attendance okay your attendance should be greater than 50% and from here you can generate the certificate right and here from here you can join the whatsapp group or telegram group and first mark the attendance from here and here you can rate the session 10 9 8 okay and here if you are interested in the 6 month let's upgrade program you can click on the yes part and if you need any like if you need any improvised version here improve further then you can here select anything here i'm selecting nothing and after that submit the attendance and now you can see ki my attendance is okay it is not updated but it will get update updated and let me announce the winner of the yesterday quiz so give me one minute yeah so guys oh uh, yeah so congrats rohit for getting rupees 500 amazon cop coupon you have won the first prize and congrats naidu and sushila for getting the second and third position okay and uh, one more thing if you want to like uh, join the daily quiz you can go to the whatsapp link and telegram link and from there you can get the information ki how you can give the quiz apart from this here like this is a demo version okay demo version of the java bootcamp and here i like due to uh, time constraint i am not able to discuss much about us much about the problem solving skills but we have one workshop here that is that is a two month workshop and the price of this workshop is 499 okay and you will be getting the good understanding on javascript how to create a top notch resume okay resume is a very important part guys okay if you are not using the correct keyword if you are not using the correct uh, uh, data okay then it is like uh, it will be difficult for you to get uh, your resume selected in the company right so we will discuss this part also we will discuss about uh, discuss about the advanced excel part github okay like someone is uh, asking for the github ki how we can upload the project or assignment okay before uh, uploading the project or assignment if you know the basic command if you know how github works okay if you know how to manage merge conflict and each uh, like the advanced part then you can easily update the project okay it is a very easy process but you should have the basic understanding ki why we need the github what is the importance of github how it solve the problem in the it field okay so this we will discuss in the github master class and after that we will ha we have this google data studio master class and one master class is for this deploying app to cloud with aws and here we have what data structure master class where we will discuss about ki hey how you can think of the problem okay when you get any problem statement uh, in the interview or in the uh, coding platform if you are pra practicing on any coding pl platform there if you get any question then how you should approach that question okay this will be a very important step because if you are able to think of the approach okay if you are able to think of the approach then it is like ki ha you can solve the problem okay so the approach part is important you should know about the data structure why you uh, you should use this data structure in this problem like here na you can see ki why we are using if else if and not, why we are not using if and else part right why we are using for loop and why we are not going with the while and do while loop right so this all thing will be covered ki you will get the answer of why okay why you have to use array why you have to use uh, this linguish stack q okay and what is the need of using array okay why we get the need of using class okay what is a constructor i am not able to Uh, like uh, give a brief details on the constructor part brief explanation on the constructor part also okay so we will discuss each and everything and the main part is two thing why what and what happens behind the scene okay 
what happens behind the scene when you hit on the run button this is a very important part if you know what happens behind the scene then you are able to write the clear logic and you know ki what mistake you will do if you will write some other thing okay in your code so this is a master class this is a two month work master class uh, two month workshop and in the two month workshop this class will be happening this workshop will be happening on every saturday and sunday for each weekend you will have like for the first weekend you will have uh, suppose modern javascript workshop for the second weekend you will have google data studio workshop like this and uh, the price you know 499 and like if you will use this uh, future dev coupon then you will get 20% uh, discount on the price so i think it will cost 399 now and apart from this you will get uh, you will be interacting live uh, there will be a live interaction from uh, the industrial ex expert you will be interacting with the mentor okay this is a like one to one session only and uh, yeah and so you will get the certificate that will be uh, that will be in collaboration with this okay google and dc and uh, apart from this okay yeah so this is all for today session guys and if you want to enroll for the full stack program you can join our 24 september batch where you will get to learn about the front end part where we will get to learn about the back end part and how to merge front end and back end to create a simple like to create a good project industry level project okay and apart from this you will get to learn about the dsa module also ki how to implement uh, like the dsa part each and every uh, like topic of the dsa okay this is also one to one mentorship you can have any doubt you can schedule the doubt okay session with your mentor and if you have like career related doubt then also you can schedule a doubt session with your mentor if you have to build a resume you can uh, like have one to one session with your mentor okay so you will be having 100% job guarantee okay 100% life 6 month workshop and the most important thing is you will be like learning new thing okay you will be adding skills to yourself okay so this is all for uh, for this boot camp and hope i am able to clear most of the doubt guys okay yeah so thank you everyone for attending the session it was great yeah can anyone tell is me what is this thank you thank you everyone thank you anything you have to ask you can ask now okay sir please share it okay i will update the note on the comment i will like share the link of the note in the comment okay uh, you will get the option of generating the certificate okay after this class okay so how where i will share the note Uh, in the comment part i will share the note okay i haven't shared the note yet but in the comment i will share the note right 